Ow, another day, another big pain. Ah, the joy of getting older. Oh, hey there folks, welcome back to the Pain in the Neck, the podcast where we talk about ouchies and not much else, where we offer top-notch, well-researched information about pain management and wonderful medications opioid. But hey, let's face it, who want a serious podcast about pain? They are about as fun as root candle without anesthesia. So I am Hidayat, your host for today, and remember, laughter is the best medicine. Well, that, and maybe some ibuprofen? Because, let's be honest, sometimes the best way to deal with the big pain is to laugh until you cry. Or maybe whimper uncontrollably depend on the situations. So today, I am accompanied by two beautiful, intelligent ladies, Ms. Lee Joey, the head pharmacist of pain management department of UMMC, and Dr. Sakina, the anesthesiology specialist at UMMC to discuss on the topic pain management essentials mastering opioid analgesics. So how are you today, Miss Joey and Dr. Sakina? This is my first time on a podcast and I'm very excited for it. Thank you, Daya, for having me here today. Yes, I am fine, Daya, and as seen as Miss Joey, I am so excited for my first ever podcast episode. Glad to hear that. Wow, we have a hundred viewers now online with us today. Let's get started our podcast today with some essential knowledge about opioid in pain management. So, from what I know, opioid can be used to reduce pain. But can opioid be used for any kind of pain, Dr. Sakina? Thank you for the question. Opioid targets specific pain type within acute, subacute, and chronic categories, but not all kind of pain in those categories. Opioids are commonly used for treatment of acute and subacute pain, and there are some studies to support this statement. For example, according to this one study, opioids are very useful for managing severe acute pain during surgery or any other treatment, as well as short-term pain resulting from tissue injury or nerve damage. And on top of that, opioids also can be used to treat chronic pain because studies suggest that opioids might provide relief about 30% for CNCP, chronic non-cancer pain, and according to the Ministry of Health for the management of cancer pain, oral morphine is given as the first-line therapy for moderate to severe cancer pain. Why? Because it gives a good relief of symptoms, but it comes with some unwanted side effects, mainly constipation, nausea, and vomiting. Doctor, may I know what is the appropriate dose that is usually administered to the patient? Okay, actually the right dosage is still within unclear because there is no appropriate dose that relieves pain without major side effect. Uh, and studies show similar pain relief between people on lower and higher dose of opioid for chronic pain. So how do we decide the dosage in clinical practice? And according to this um, Ministry of Health for Cancer Patients, they uh, require up to 200 mg of morphine per day. Oh, I see. Okay, Doctor, we got some questions from the listener. Zach Fortify asked that, besides morphine, what is the common suspicion of drug? And what is the strongest opioid among all of them? Okay, thank you, Zach. I will explain about this. Besides morphine, we have a lot. We have fentanyl that is mainly in the form of transdermal patches or injection. We also have oxycodone and pathidine. But even with this many opioid options, there is no clear winner for pain relief. Because studies haven't shown that one opioid works better than another for acute and chronic pain. Oh, I see. Opioid is very useful in medical fields. Hmm, I'm curious. What about the mechanism of actions of opioid? How they work in our body? Perhaps Miss Joey could fill us up on this. Sure. Within the central nervous system, activation of mu opioid receptors, MOP, in the midbrain is thought to be a major mechanism of opioid-induced analgesia. Opioids work by mimicking the body's natural pain control mechanisms. Within the dorsal horn of the spinal cord, the peripheral pain neurons meet the central nervous system neurons. Substance P, a pain neurotransmitter, is then released at the synapse. This causes increased neural traffic through the nucleus magnus NRM, which stimulates serotonin and uncoupling containing neurons that connect directly to the dorsal horn substantia gelatinosa. As a result, there will be a decrease in nociceptive transmission from the periphery to the thalamus. Hence, we can say that a cascade of cellular processes and pathways generates much of the analgesic effect usually recognized. 
That's really amazing. It's always fascinating to know how each medications work in our body. Oh, we got another question from the listener from Rain Eight One One Eight. What are some other important points to be taken account for opioids are prescribed to the patients? Well, as Dr. Sakina has mentioned just now, opioids play a very vital role in pain management. They are often the drug of choice for moderate to severe pain that is associated with advanced illness. If the pain is only mild to moderate but is expected to worsen over time, we will start a stronger opioid to avoid another drug switch. So in hospital settings, around the clock dosing or we call it as the ATC dosing, where the medication is given at regularly scheduled intervals throughout the day is more preferred than the PRN as needed dosing because as needed dosing requires the patient to determine when the pain is sufficiently intense to call the nurse for its administration. If pain occurs, the prompt for oral administration of drugs is from non opioids such as aspirin and acetaminophen and then to mild opioids, codeine if necessary and lastly stronger opioids such as morphine until the pain is elevated. Are uh, opioids administered through intravenous route only? Uh, oh no, there are other route of administration that can be used, for example, subcutaneous and transdermal, but the most commonly used in clinical setting is oral and intravenous route. Also, different dosing regimens will result in varied time courses of opioid plasma concentrations, which lead to different time courses of the opioid effects. For example, a bolus injection will be utilized when we want to have an immediate or temporary effect, whereas long-term effects can be achieved through the use of intravenous infusions, prolonged release pills, or transdermal delivery devices. We normally use the long-acting opioids for continuous pain, and oral route is recommended whenever it's possible. Hmm, that's the meeting. Another question. Does the combinations of opioid can prolong its effect? That's a very good question. So the long-term effect is actually achieved Due to its type of formulation, we call it as a sustained release effect where the drug is designed to be slowly released in the body over an extended period of time to maintain the therapeutic levels. However, to answer your question, we usually do not recommend administering two different opioids at the same time unless the therapeutic effect cannot be achieved with one opioid to avoid any undesirable side effects. Oh, speaking of that, what is the possible side effect of opioid analysis? The common side effects are dizziness, sedation, nausea, vomiting, and constipation. Some risks of prolonged opioid use are tolerance, dependence, and addiction. Tolerance happens when a person needs higher dose to have the same effect and experience diminished effects when taking the same dosage of a medicine. Dependence occurs when a person has symptoms of withdrawal when the opioid is stopped. Lastly, Addiction is when someone has very strong cravings and will continue to take the opioid even when it causes problems. But rest assured, doctors and pharmacies will work together to create the best treatment plan and we will always monitor patients from time to time. Yes, as pharmacists, we'll also monitor the dosage to make sure that it's always at the optimal level where it does not cause any side effects to our patients, so there is no need to worry about if patients start to develop some side effect, what can be done? Okay, we can go for opioid rotation, which means switching from one opioid to another to find a better balance between the pain relief and the side effect or to enable effective dose increases for adequate pain management. So what are another circumstances that we can go for opioid rotation? Well, we go for opioid rotation when the increase in dose leads to intolerable side effects like drowsiness, confusion, even severe pain persists uh, in increasing doses or any new side effects that emerge. Moreover, depending on the patient clinical condition, sometimes they need 
uh, occurred with different properties um, to prevent, for example, worsening their kidney function. And cost factor may also require a change in treatment, and that's when we may consider for um, opioid rotation. So I'd just like to add on some points about the opioid rotation. When we initiate opioid rotation, it's very crucial that we determine an equi-analgesic dose between the current and the new opioids. So equi-analgesic dose means that the amount of two opioids at steady state that offers roughly the equivalent pain relief. This can actually help us to achieve a better equilibrium between the pain control and also the side effects control. Now I understand a lot more about opioids. How about the audience? Give us a like if you enjoyed the episode. So Dr. Sakina, can you give us some take-home messages for our listener today? So my dear listeners, if you are prescribed with opioid, it is crucial to consult your doctor within a few days of starting your opioid. This follow-up will ensure the medication is effectively managing your pain and to discuss any side effect with your doctors. So thank you Dr. Sakina and Ms. Lin Chowi for the informative sharing for today. You guys did well! Thank you, Daniel. So that's all for today. Don't forget to like and share our podcast. Before we end our video, let's take some time to go through the do's and don'ts if you are on opioid medication. Firstly, you must only take the opioid exactly as prescribed to avoid overdose. Next, remember to always check with your doctor or pharmacist before taking any over-the-counter medicines. Store the opioids in a safe place and keep them away from children. Any leftover opioids should be safely disposed of as soon as they are no longer needed. Lastly, remember to keep track of the amount of medicine in the container so you know if anyone else is taking it. When you are taking opioids, do not drink alcohol as it may lead to serious medical complications and even death. Next. Do not take any other medicines unless you check with your healthcare provider or pharmacist first to avoid any drug-drug interactions. Do not drive, ride a bike, or operate machinery while taking the medicines because it can make you sleepy. Other than that, do not take opioids if you are or may be pregnant as it can cause serious problems in a baby. Last but not least, do not share your medicines with anyone.